For those of you who follow our channel, you know we talk a lot about dividend paying whole life insurance in Canada and how you can leverage it to use now while you're alive and to leave a big legacy behind for your beneficiaries. Today, I'm going to talk about the dividends that pay into these types of policies, how they're generated, what's in them, how safe and secure they are, who offers them, and more. I'm going to use some general examples from large Canadian insurance companies and leave a link in the description or on this page somewhere where you can download the most recent and accurate number for each participating account. Here's what we're going to talk about today. Number one, why dividends are important. Number two, what makes up the dividend? So the various components that affect how, how much it is every year. And number three, smoothing the returns to eliminate a bumpy ride. Number four, what is this participating account actually invested in? Number five, we'll talk about how long some of these companies have paid a dividend. And number six, what's the best company to use? So let's get started. We'll start with why are dividends important to make these leverage strategies work? These strategies where we build up the cash value inside your policy and then leverage it with the insurance company or a bank they benefit huge because the dividend that generally pays into these types of policy. The dividend grows the insurance asset, which is underpinning the loan or the line of credit. And this is great for you and it's great for the bank because the asset that you're using as collateral is growing. And the way that we set it up, both your cash values and your actual insurance amount will grow over time. So in order to do this strategy right, you need to set up the dividend options correctly on day one. And it's absolutely crucial that the person that you're working with does this right. And if you're looking to build a cash value policy that you can leverage, you should talk to us because we do this all day, every day, and we're really good at it. And that's my plug for the video. Now let's keep going. What is this dividend and what is it actually comprised of? And the dividend that you receive when you have one of these types of policies is made up of a few main parts. Obviously there's investment returns. So this is when they take the money and they invest it in the market or by lending it to large corporations or federal and provincial governments. This is the biggest part that affects how much the dividend will be each year. Then we have mortality. So this is a factor that's not available in any other type of investment, right? This means that if the insurance company actuaries do a good job and accurately estimate the mortality and their expenses, there should be some additional yield. Then we have money that goes out like expenses, taxes, inflation, and then policy lapses, right? So if people are canceling their insurance, all of these things affect the dividend that gets paid. These participating accounts also use a concept called smoothing. And their goal with these accounts is stability over the very long term. And so what smoothing does is it amortizes the investment gains and the losses over a number of years, which helps maintain stability over time. In simple terms, when they have a huge year, they don't pay out all the profits at once. And then when they have a down year, they can top it up so that it keeps the consistency. And there's multiple things that go into these participating account returns each year. And some of those are not available anywhere else in the financial world, right? Like mortality. So speaking of the smoothing part, now's a good time to show you how this works. So here on the screen, you're going to see a table of the dividend scale interest rate returns for the last 25 years. And I'm going to compare them to the inflation, to the S&P TSX total return, a five-year GIC, and the Government of Canada 10-year bond rate. The one that's on the screen right now is the Manulife return, but the numbers are very similar with all the top Canadian insurance companies. You can see that the total return over this period has been very in line with the S&P TSX, but with way less volatility. And then on this graphic, you can see the S&P TSX line going up and down all over the place while the insurance dividend is basically just a smooth straight line. Now remember from the last slide that they had the exact same return over the last 25 years. Just one is a very bumpy ride and one is a very smooth ride. And so the standard deviation, which is how much the line goes up and down, is lower than all of the compared investment types. And it's almost a factor of 10 times lower than the S&P TSX total return with the same return. What is the participating account invested in to generate those returns, right? So when you're buying one of these policies, what is your money actually invested in? This varies a little bit from company to company, but the core of the investments are basically the same at all the insurance companies. Now think about it. Canada is only so big. 
So when your team is out there trying to invest billions of dollars in a highly regulated way, there are only so many options you can look at. Generally, the big Canadian insurance companies are invested in varying amounts of government bonds, right? So this includes federal and provincial, but mostly provincial. And they've all got their different bond strategies internally, but as a consumer, that's way deeper in the weeds than you would ever need to know. And really, if you think about who buys and holds a tremendous amounts of bonds in Canada, well, life insurance companies, right? They're very good at bonds. All of the company's bond desks are long-term professionals with ample knowledge and resources. They have deep bond books, all bought and maturing at different times and different terms for the last 100 years. The insurance companies are all increasingly invested in equities. And because interest rates are so low right now and bonds aren't paying what they used to, so they're cautiously moving up the risk curve to generate additional yield. All these insurance companies generally also do some level of private fixed income, which means investing into private placements. A lot more of them are getting more and more into real estate. Generally, it's commercial real estate ownership uh, and management of things like office buildings, shopping malls, etc. They also lend money on commercial real estate through commercial mortgages and financing. So you can see all the big insurance company banners zap strapped to the fences around big development. That's generally money from these participating accounts. And I love seeing that because I'm getting a piece of that project because I bought insurance. So what's also good is that these companies generally manage all or most of this in-house. They've got hundreds of people managing investments of these PAR funds. They have an equities team, a bond team, a real estate team, a lending team, all working full time for you and me. How long has the dividend for each company been paid? I'm gonna break down a little piece from four of the companies that we work with. We'll start with Sun Life. They've paid a dividend to their participating account owners for over 150 years. They currently have over 1.1 million people with these types of policies, and their PAR account right now is just over $14 billion in assets. Sun Life, the whole company, has over a trillion dollars in assets under management. That's more than a lot of countries. In 2020, the Sun Life participating account paid out over $520 million in policy owner dividends, which means if you have a Sun Life participating policy, you would have received some of that and your cash values would have grown. We also work a lot with Manulife. They paid out over $280 million in dividends to participating owners in 2019. And they've recently innovated how much additional cash you can put into these types of policies. And it's doing really well for them. Other companies are actually starting to copy Manulife, and this really helps our clients who are interested in getting the most amount of cash surrender value in their policy each year. Manulife's been in the game since 1887, so more than 130 years. We also work a lot with Equitable Life of Canada. They just turned 100, which is awesome, and their participating account just recently broke a billion dollars, and it's growing fast. The good part about the equitable story is they're also a mutual company, which means that the participating account holders are the company owners. And a lot of people who like the infinite banking concept like working with equitable because it's a mutual company. Personally, my first ever whole life policy was with them and I still have it and I'm never canceling it. The Canada Life Par Fund is the biggest in Canada, over $50 billion since they recently consolidated Canada Life with London Life and Great West Life. They invest in things like wind farms and they own buildings that you've seen like 555 Robson Street in Vancouver. They've distributed dividends every single year since 1848. So that's more than 170 years. That's longer than Canada has been a country. So obviously nobody can guarantee that these companies will pay a dividend in the future, but I can look back at more than 100 years track record and the fact that these policies are designed around having a dividend. So it would be a disaster if any one of these companies didn't pay a dividend. So if I was gonna bet, I would bet yes. You know, But you can look at the facts and decide for yourself if you think Canadian insurance companies are going to continue paying dividends. This is a question that comes up a lot. What is the best company to use? Right? A lot of people ask us this all the time, and the answer to this is the same as the answer to a lot of financial questions. It depends. What makes one company best for you is not the same as what makes another company best for someone else. Some companies are better for people in different age bands like kids or parents or grandparents. Some companies are better for business owners who will own the insurance inside their company or their holding company. Some have more cash value, some have more death benefit, and it really depends on your situation and what you're trying to do. What we do 
is we meet with clients and have a very in-depth discovery process to find out more about your current situation, you know, where you're at today and your goals and your concerns moving forward. So like, what are you trying to do? Where are you trying to go? And because we're dealing with insurance, your health also has an effect on which company we're going to recommend. Some are more lenient and some are more conservative when it comes to underwriting on health. So there's no real answer to what is the best company to use. It needs to be chosen according to your needs and not just according to who pays the highest or lowest dividend. That being said, for doing any kind of whole life strategy with big cash values and leverage, you can only work with a few companies that let us design the policies this way. We design them differently than most people. And I've already mentioned that some of the companies that we work with and they've paid dividends every single year for more than a hundred years, which is pretty amazing. It's very stable, very reliable. Some of the big names in Canada that we work with are Sun Life, Manulife, Equitable Life, Canada Life, Empire Life. There are others, but these are the ones we generally work with because they have good cash values, they have a good dividend, and you get the right amount of insurance, which is the reason we're setting these things up in the first place. What's the dividend today and how often does it change? So today we're in early 2022 and the dividend for these companies that we work with is between 5.5 and 6.2%. So now this is going to change this year and it's going to change again next year. The insurance companies all announce their new dividend scale interest rate once per year. And the dividend will stay at that percent until next year when they may or may not change it, depending on what happens. The other number that changes every year at the same time is the new policy loan interest rate. So this is the interest rate you'll pay if you leverage your cash values directly from the insurance company. The range on these is bigger right now than the range on the dividend. And it goes anywhere from four to seven and a half percent, depending on the company that you're working with. So now this video is starting to get a little long and I'm going to stop. Literally, I could talk about this for days if you let me. So I really need to be self-aware and shut up before I talk too much. So when I was putting this video together, there are still some key questions that I didn't get to. And I'll be making more videos on Canadian insurance company uh, and the dividends that they pay into their whole life policies. I'm also going to leave a link below where you can download the different insurance company most current numbers. Uh, so you can see the dividends for the past years, plus what you'd actually be invested in if you went with something like this. When you click the link, just enter your email. It'll be sent to you straight away. We don't spam. We don't play any of those dumb games. Now, if you like this video, could you help me out? Could you click on like, or if you got valuable information from this, could you share it with somebody else who would also find this valuable? And ideally that would be a business owner or an accountant or a lawyer. The algorithm really likes it and it really helps us out. So thank you and I will see you next time.